Are you making fun of me? So uh, we're hiking up the Boat Mountain Trail this morning because I want to tell you of a story <clears throat> that the uh, the story of Dennis Martin who disappeared here in 1969. So as we walk, I will tell you parts of the story but we are on this boat mountain trail which you can see is looks like an old road maybe an old logging road or something like that and uh, so I'll tell you a little bit more about Dennis here just a little bit They've had some heavy rain. So, back in 1969, Dennis Martin was like six or seven years old, and it's pretty muddy through here. Uh, watch your step. And uh, his family was him and his dad and his grandpa were, they drove up here on this road. You could get to pretty close to Spence Field where the family was basically gonna play and cook out and all that kind of stuff because there's shelters. And, uh, so that's what they were doing, and uh, as we're making making our way up here, it's obvious you can tell this is a road uh, that yeah. people used to drive on or whatever. So, so uh, with Dennis and his family there. So Dennis 
and uh, his dad and his grandpa were up at the Spence Field where they have shelters, and uh, it's right off the Appalachian Trail. From here, it's 6.6 .6 miles, the hike. I don't know if it was shorter back in the day or, or whatever, or if you could drive almost to it and then hike a little ways, but that's where they were. And so they were gonna cook out and do all that kind of stuff. And then uh, also uh, another family showed up while they were picnicking uh, with their family. And the funny thing is, is their last name was Martin too, which is just kind of odd, but. Mm -hmm. um, Very odd. That's. Yeah, so as, uh, so the kids, they start playing, playing like hide and seek. And they're, you know, Spencefield's kind of wide open, but it borders the Appalachian Trail, so kind of wooded too. Obviously, we we're in the Smokies. And uh, so as they're playing, they were cooking and it was almost ready to eat, so they hollered for the boys to come in. Well, the two older boys, that had come with the dad, they came right on in once they hollered for him. But Dennis didn't show up. Dad looked to where he knew he was last hiding behind this bush. So dad, and that was probably about 50 yards away. So dad uh, sprinted up to the bush, looked behind him, he was gone. Dennis was missing. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a minute. Everybody always talks about Bigfoot and the tree breaks. Well, sometimes he just carries around saws, so you can just saw them off real easy. Smart guy. So, we left off where Dennis Martin's dad ran up to the tree about uh, 50 miles, 50, about 50 yards from where they were cooking out, maybe not that far. And uh, Dennis wasn't there. So, like I said earlier, Spence Field is like right connected to the Appalachian Trail. So dad ran up to the Appalachian Trail. He went running, hollering for Dennis for about uh, two miles in one direction. Came back, hollering for Dennis the whole time. Then he came back and he went a mile the other direction hollering for Dennis. No sound, no trace, nothing. And this went on, they did a search, they called the forest rangers, they brought the forest rangers in and they searched for days, but good Lord, one of them big, one of those big mayflies. I mean, that thing was that big. He bit the fire out of me, but anyway, uh, so it started to rain for days. They brought in, actually they brought in the green berets a little bit later, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so once the forest rangers got here, there was an FBI agent that showed up, but this was really not his jurisdiction, so I was kind of curious as to why there would be an FBI agent there. Uh, I guess because it maybe was federal property. And so the search went on forever and ever. Finally, uh, they got word back that down in Cades Cove, we're, right now we're almost in Cades Cove. This, this trail is right before you get into the main entrance going into Cades Cove. And my glasses are fogging up, so. It's very humid, because they got a lot of rain and all that kind of stuff, and may, it's very damp. So that's why the bugs are out, and that's why it's humid. So anyway, <clears throat> they uh, 
Where was that, Tina? Uh, they brought the federal agent in, the mm -hmm. FBI. Yeah. And they told him if they, uh, I think the ranger said, if we hear anything, we will keep in contact with you. And it's funny that Dennis Martin's dad was also named Dennis. Uh, so anyway, they looked and looked um, for months. They didn't even find a shoestring. They found nothing of Dennis. But one thing that was reported, a family reported to his father about an incident that had happened an hour and a half after Dennis was missing. So we're right here on Boat Mountain Trail. And up towards Cades Coast, there's a place called Rowan's Creek. And it would take a human about an hour and a half to hike that from here to there. Uh, could be longer because, you know, the way th foliage changes, it could get denser or whatever. Uh, there was a family down at Rowan's Creek that had asked the ranger where could they probably see a bear or some wildlife. And the guy said, well, just hike up Rowan's Creek. So this family, totally unrelated to Dennis Martin, totally unrelated, totally unrelated story, except for this one thing. As they start their hike, the son looks up at his dad and says, hey, dad, look, there's a bear. And the dad looks and he said, son, that's not a bear. It was a man or a big man, okay? Back in these parts, they always called them wild men. They still call them wild men today. They say there's wild men in these woods. Uh, that's, to me, that's another term for Bigfoot. So... They said when it, they saw that they talked to his dad, he said, and he had something. He was carrying something on his back. Now, we don't know what that was. I'm not speculating. I'm just putting that out there as a part of a factual event that actually happened. Mm -hmm. So I'll finish up the rest of the story in just a little bit. I will say this. They never found a trace of Dennis all these years ever but we'll wrap it up when we get back i stopped right here because it got so quiet we could hear some birds chirping earlier but it's dead silent right now. Oh. One little turn. There you go. Thank goodness. Oh, and I see him. He's right. This hike is, uh, I mean, it's not the most beautiful hike, but it's very, very thick woods. Uh, this is like the second time we've gone up here. We haven't seen a single person today. We did see a couple last time. But what were you saying about it, honey? This hike? I say it's like fairly easy to moderate. It's not like a hard hike. Um, but it's kind of eerie. Like you said, with all the thick brush and trees. Yep. And no people, which is unusual for the Smoky Mountains mm -hmm. and hiking trails. So. Yeah. She's right, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we conclude here in just a little bit. But we're going to try to get up to this little camp. We'll see if we can make it, and then uh, I'll conclude the video there. You don't want to miss the ending. I promise. As I was just filming some B-roll, I heard something in the woods, not a knock. More like something maybe falling, I guess. What do you think? A step. Crunching brush. Yes, that's what I heard. So something. Something like that. Either something fell kind of big or something took a step. Kind of big. You gotta love the Smoky Mountains.
Let's go up here and check this out. You coming? You don't have to. That's a nice place to end the story. So this is a cool little spot right here. Tina was saying it's like a little a little tiny clearing. Yeah. Just up the bank. It's like a little off the tree. Yeah, like a little camping spot or something. But anyway, um, they never found anything of Dennis Martin. Not not a shoestring, not a shoe, not anything. There were there was no blood traces of blood. Of course, uh, you know, they looked at all that. Of course, it also rained for two weeks. Uh, they, nothing. Nothing at all. And they searched for months. Yeah, and also uh, Dennis's grandfather came back like every weekend for several months and years even um, to look for signs, anything, anything that would give him a sign that there was evidence of Dennis. Yep. So anyway... I do have a couple of questions about this case. Knowing about the people seeing the, I guess they would say it was a wild man up at Rowan's Creek. There was a couple of questions. Number one, why, why was the FBI here? Number two, why was the Green Beret called in? Yeah. Why would you need? The Green Beret. Exactly. The Green Beret, have you ever heard of them coming in to search for anybody? What are they looking for? What are they doing if they come here? So, I will say this. There's a YouTuber. I cannot remember his link down here, but he, he has a video where he says he knows what happened to Dennis Miller. Martin. Well, yeah, Dennis. We don't want anything to happen to Dennis Miller. I'm all fogged up again. Uh, he know, he said he knows what happens to Dennis Martin. The people around here knows what happened to Dennis Martin. And he basically says it was wild men. And also, it, curious that the FBI agent in charge of this committed suicide. And a lot of people say what happened in the guy's video. So I'm just going on this guy's video, not saying I don't believe him, but I think it's curious to think about. Uh, they say he committed suicide because he, the Green Beret came in and they laid out 13 wild men bodies. And the FBI agent couldn't bear it because they look, you know, like humans or whatever. And uh, they say that's what weighed on him. I don't know. That's pure speculation because, and I don't like to speculate. I'm just repeating what the guy said in his video. Uh, and it makes you think, is, is there some truth to that? We don't, we don't know. All we do know is Dennis Martin disappeared. We don't, we've never seen him before. I'm not going to speculate what it was or anything like that that's for you to decide i will say the great smoky mountains national park is one of the uh has the highest one of the highest numbers of missing person cases mm -hmm. in the united states the highest definitely in the east uh but it falls behind yosemite in the west which yosemite has the most missing people cases and we're not talking about missing people where you know foul play committed suicide we think something was bad we're just talking about missing people that you know have never been found like dennis martin i mean we just don't know what happened and that's kind of weird very mysterious i thought i saw something over to the left but i don't know it got my attention hmm. so but anyway 
Love the Smokies. So, uh, as you can see from the sign, it's 5.7 miles to the Appalachian Trail. And you can see very clearly that you can still drive on this road. Incidentally, I have to tell you a story about what happened to me and my buddy Gail Moore, who you've seen in a couple videos. And I'll do that. I'll tell you the story about me and Gail when we're eating dinner. So if you want to hear that story, mm -hmm. I'll leave a link saying, hey, uh, what happened to me and Gail at the uh, ranger station down here at Sugarlands Visitor Center. So that'll be interesting. It had to do with this trail. It was about this, this trail right here. Okay. So we made it where we wanted to go. It, we hiked up here 1.2 miles, so we got 1.2 miles to get back, and then we're going to go eat. Hopefully, well, we don't know. I think it's going to be the, what's it called, Tina? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, oh, it's Five Oaks. <laughs> I don't know. I was drawing a blank. Five Oaks in Pigeon Forge. Yeah. Actually, so we're gonna try to eat the sister company to Crockett's, and I asked, I put Tina on the spot because I couldn't think of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't know. I'm like, oh God, what? And then I was, then it came to me when I was putting her on the spot, and I was like, going. <laughs> so she would say, Pah. and that gave her the idea. It's Five Oaks Farm Kitchen. But also, when you're with the frontiersmen, there's no set plan. To where you're going to eat, or when you're going to eat. <laughs> Ask I just Andy know Goodspeed at that. some point I'm going to eat, and so there. That's why I didn't know where we were going to eat. Well, see, <laughs> Tina has learned you're going to eat and you're going to like it. Andy hasn't learned that that we're going to finally eat, and he's got to have to like it. Just be patient. Just <laughs> there's always a new thing. It doesn't have to be corned beef hash or wings or what else does you like? Poutine. <laughs> Poutine. <laughs> And <laughs> we're not talking about poutine, it's poutine. Right. He likes poutine. That's like French fries with gravy well, and cheese, cur cheese. Guys, no. He may like poutine too, but in this case, it's poutine. Guys, if you uh, want a very quiet, peaceful walk, um, this is a good hike. Very, I mean, there's only two parking spots. No, most people don't know about it, and I think the park service discourages it. That's why I'm going to tell you about that over brunch. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> I do pretty good going up. But coming down, that's when my knees start really hurting. Sucks getting old. That was not done by a saw. Just saying. Looking over this embankment right now, it is so still that it's eerie. Wind's not blowing. You can hear a helicopter up there. I mean, an airplane. see our Toyota and the road. And you can tell it's a road. Hello everyone. This is a wrap up of our hike today. Um, 
Hope you enjoyed the hike that we took on Boat Mountain Trail here in the Smokies. And if you liked the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we'll bring you more videos with the Frontiersman Travel Adventures. Thanks. Have a great day. Hey guys, I enjoyed that hike. I need to get out more and more. And now, I will say this. I am hungry. And I hope we can get us a table at Five Oaks Farm Kitchen and we won't have to wait for about two hours. Because I'm not good at waiting in line. I'll end up at the Red Rooster if I have to. Oh, goodness. Oh, for goodness sakes. I'm a very patient person. Does anybody want to attest to that? <laughs> but I don't like waiting in line. Shoes. Uh, man, Five Oaks Farm Kitchen. That place is for real. <laughs> and uh, they have a good breakfast. It's probably the second best breakfast in the world behind Crockett's. Uh, but Crockett's breakfast camp if you haven't gone there you need to go there like just get in your car right now and just go because it's worth it uh get there early though because just get in your car and go that's yeah i mean if you like breakfast if you like breakfast price. food just go even andy liked it he don't like nothing right. so especially if i like it but anyway great hike see y'all later I just saw a couple of wolves standing on the side of the road just a minute ago. Go, oh, what was it? They were little Maltese dogs. Hmm. She don't know a wolf when she sees one. It was not a wolf.